What's up guys, Andre here, and I just got done watching Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, which is something I don't say lightly, but I had good reason to tonight, because as you may have heard, Reggie and Shigeru Miyamoto appeared on the show to showcase not only Super Mario Run, but also a surprise showing of uh, the Nintendo Switch running Breath of the Wild. So this is pretty cool for a few reasons. One, this is our first time actually seeing the Nintendo Switch in a live demonstration. Um, and adding on to that, it's the first time we've actually seen it running a game also for, you know, in a live demonstration, because everything in the... Um, reveal trailer was of course done in post. So it was it, especially cool to see Breath of the Wild running on an actual Nintendo Switch uh, being played in real time. Um, so I want to take a closer look at this because there's a few things we can comment on here or might be able to infer um, based on the Switch and Breath of the Wild running on it. Okay, so first up is the fact that Breath of the Wild, although it of course looks very similar to the Wii U one, it appeared to be running incredibly smoothly, much smoother than we've actually seen it run before on the Wii U, and I, you know, I even played E3. Based on what we saw here, it seems to be running incredibly smooth, even with a giant explosion going off on the screen. Now, granted, we didn't see a ton of the game, so who knows if it's going to run smoothly the entire time, but based on the little snippet here, it seems to be promising, and again, based on this little snippet, it seems like this may be the definitive version, just because of how smooth it was running in comparison to what we've seen on the Wii U. Now, beyond that, we also got to see a new feature of the interface for the first time, sort of, but I'll get to that in a second, and that's the fact that in the corner of Breath of the Wild, we can see a new clock icon, followed by, or right next to, it appears to be a new weather forecast icon, or... Uh, section because we can see the current weather there showing it's presently sunny followed by two more icons that seem to show it being cloudy uh, and since it's positioned right below the clock my guess is that those icons are going to scroll right to left with the you know current weather always being right below the clock so that's pretty cool so it'll give you a quick idea or a you know in some idea of what weather should be coming up which makes sense in the game you know as dynamic as breath of the wild that having the information could be extremely useful for you know planning what you want to do as well as what you need in your inventory um, now, I should mention real quick, that's technically not our first time seeing that, because even though that portion of the screen is covered in the recent Game Awards demo, um, in the thumbnail for the video Nintendo posted, you actually could see it there. But, you know, there you go, that's a quick, uh, quick um, spoiler of our upcoming analysis of the Game Awards demo. Anyways, moving on, we got a better look at the Switch itself, because again, we actually got to see it in a live setting, you know, using not completely predetermined camera angles, and there's a few things it showed off about it. Um, first off, we get a look at the back of the system, we see two cables coming out, presumably that's the power and the um, HDMI out. Again, they look, they look to be coming from the dock. So that makes sense. I mean, that's what we expected. But, you know, it's good to have that just confirmation that there'll be two cables coming off when you have it docked in the system. Or rather, docked in the dock. <laughs> Anyways. Now, beyond that, we also got to look at underneath the system briefly. And it looks to me like you can see a USB 3.0 port there. Now, I can't say for sure, but the shape does look does look similar to me. So um, that ties in with the, with the recent rumors we've heard and isn't, you know, terribly surprising. But there you go. Um, oh, and speaking of the Switch, we actually got a pretty good lengthy look at the system this time. And I have to say, that thing is looking sharp. It is looking clean. It's looking sharp. Um, I am digging what I'm seeing here. It is the exact type of demonstration Nintendo, uh, you know, really needed to showcase, you know, outside of the context of just a trailer that largely caters to existing fans. This is reaching a whole new demographic, and that's great. Like, it looked good, it made a good appearance, so that's awesome. Now, speaking of how it looked, though, I've already seen some early comments commenting on the screen, um, and how it doesn't look particularly great in this demonstration, and yeah, that's true. But I want to point out, we shouldn't be reading too much into that, because under the harsh conditions of stage lighting, they're using extremely bright, extremely vibrant lighting out there. No screen's going to look good under those conditions, really. Or no, you know, uh, consumer-level device is going to look good under those settings. Um, or under those conditions. I wouldn't read too much into that. However, I do think we can tell uh, one thing about the screen for sure, at least. And by for sure, I mean don't take it for sure. But going off of this, it looks like they are using a matte screen instead of a glossy type screen. Um, you can kind of tell by the, by the texture and the way light's being diffused on it, um, and how you can't see, like, a full reflection of the studio, you know, the studio lights above, for instance. Uh, so that's interesting. I mean, it's probably a good thing. Uh, glossy screens in general do appear to be a little bit more vibrant. Um, however, it comes at the expense of, uh, usability at points, because if you have, like, a bright light overhead, or a light overhead even, um, it can make it very hard to see the screen, since you're gonna see that light on the screen. So, I think this makes sense, especially for a screen as large as the, uh, the Switch. And also, I'm pretty sure the, the gamepad's matte too, so if you're used to the gamepad, you'll be used to this. Um, I think, it's make, I think it makes sense, especially being, you know, outdoors and whatnot, where you'll have to compete with the sun then too. Now, something else we gotta see for the first time in a real-time demonstration, which I guess is technically everything here, but we actually gotta see them go from playing on the TV to the Switch itself. 
which again is something we hadn't really seen in depth, um, you know, outside the context of a commercial, which was done in post. Uh, and that was cool to see because, as expected, it looks pretty seamless. You take it out and you can play it. But I did notice that Reggie was being a little bit uh, mysterious with the whole thing in that we didn't get a good look at the Switch while it was happening. He picks it up and he kind of tilted it away from the gamepad, almost like he's hiding the exact process. Um, so I took a close-up look at this, or as close-up look as I could take at it, and it looks like when he takes it out of the dock, uh, Breath of the Wild appears to appear immediately on the gamepad. However, before he hands it off to Jimmy, you can hear him actually activating a setting in the uh, on the Switch itself before, hand before passing it over. So I wonder if maybe the game pauses automatically before switching over, perhaps as part of the switching process, maybe it takes a couple seconds, and maybe the Breath of the Wild we saw initially was just a still frame from the game. Again, I can't really say for sure, um, I'm, I'm only speculating, but it does seem like at the very least the game pauses, if not has some kind of you know, confirmation process before you can take control on the Switch itself. Which I thought was kind of interesting, but that's something we hadn't seen before. Beyond all that, there's one more thing I wanted to mention, and that's the fact that we actually see Reggie using a Pro Controller, and we see the front side of it, or back side, I don't even know what side you would call that. The side facing the TV is a portion we see, and it looks like there is a plastic display, or plastic cover on it. Which is unusual, because that wouldn't be there Unless it's uh, covering something more likely. I mean, it's possible it is there just to tie it all together. So, actually, I just lied, basically. But I have a feeling it's there uh, as a cover for something, like an IR port, similar to on the Wii Remote itself. And this is something we've heard rumors of with the uh, Joy-Con itself. I believe the right one, there's been rumors that has a IR port on it, or IR reader, or IR sensor of some kind. And it would make sense for the Pro Controller has something of that nature as well. Um, allowing it to function, presumably, as a type of pointer when using it on the TV. Again, don't read too much into it, it could be cosmetic related, but it does look like there is, you know, you, you can't see the plastic there, and it looks like there's something within it too even, I didn't even mention that before. So, there you guys go. Again, that's just my preliminary look at the Switch, what little we can see of it here, or what little more we can see of it here, um, beyond what we already knew. But, you know, again, on the whole, this looks very promising, it was awesome to see that surprise uh, on Jimmy Fallon. The reaction seems good so far, even Jimmy Fallon seemed excited, which actually isn't saying anything, but he gets excited over everything. Everything, but putting that aside, it's still not a bad context for the Switch to appear in. So, um, yeah, I'm done talking now. I'm just rambling at this point. It looks good. I can't wait to go hands-on with this in January, and um, yeah, I'm super stoked. So thanks for watching, guys. Of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for more on the Nintendo Switch and other things gaming as well. Catch you later. Bye.